This conference will now be recorded. Yeah, so let's start. So, yeah, yesterday in the dictionary objects, we have discussed about what uh, type groups and we have seen how to create what indexes. Okay. So, in continuation to that, I will discuss one more dictionary object today. Let us discuss a concept of what log lock objects. Okay, lock objects. So a lock object is also what it is a reusable dictionary object. Okay, reusable dictionary object. Okay, so by default, so what is the purpose of this lock object? This lock object is used for row level locking. Okay, it is used for what? Row level lock uh, locking. Okay, row level locking means uh, record level locking. Means it will not allow two users. To, it will not allow two users to update the same records. Okay, so if two users are trying to update the same record it may lead to a deadlock situation so if you take operating system concept we have something called as deadlock if multiple users is trying to use the same resource it may lead to a deadlock situation similarly in programming also if multiple users are trying to update the same record update the same record it may lead to a data inconsistency it may lead to a deadlock situation so for that reason we can use a lock object by using that lock object we can lock that particular record we can lock that particular record and then perform the operation and then release the lock okay so it is something like this so one second Here. Yeah, see this. So by default, object level locking is taken care by what SAP itself. Okay, object level locking is taken care by SAP itself. So what do you mean by object level locking here? Object level locking means, suppose one user is modifying a program, okay? The other user cannot update the same program parallelly, okay? So that is nothing but called as what? Object level locking. It is taken care by what? SAP. For example, see here. <coughs> So assume that uh, we have an object. So object can be in the form of what program or object can be in the form of what uh, table or object can be in the form of structure, whatever it is. So assume that we have an object, okay? So one ABAP consultant is editing this object. Try to understand. One ABAP consultant is username is what user one is editing this particular object means he, is, uh, he has opened that object in what change mode he is doing some changes so whenever he has opened this object whenever the first user has opened this object in editable mode what SAP is going to do SAP is going to what place a lock on the object okay SAP itself is going to place a lock on the object so at the same time if other users are trying to open that object, they can only open in what read-only mode. Means two users cannot open the same object in what editable mode because 
a lock is placed by SAP on behalf of a first user. When the first user comes out of that object, the lock will be released. The lock will be released. So this object level locking is taken care by what? SAP itself. So what that object level locking will ensure only one user can edit the object at any point of time. Only one user can edit the object at any point of time. Other users can only what? Read the object. They cannot do any changes. So this is taken care by what? SAP itself. So just to show you that. See here. Suppose. Assume that I am having one program here. I will open that. SC38. I will open some program. So assume that I am having one program Z create sales order, one executable program. Okay, so this user has opened this object in change mode. So I'll open this object in the change mode. Means he is trying to edit the object. So this is what change mode. Now assume that the other user. So in this case, in this case, I am in the same user, but assume that this is the session related to other user. So now what I'll say, I'll go to SC38. I'll try to open the same program. What is the program name? Z create sales order. I'll try to open that in change mode. So when I click on change here, when I click on change, you can see it. And the status bar, you can see user so-and-so is currently editing that. Means this user can open that object in what? Uh, Read-only mode, only mode, display mode. Okay, so this object level locking is taken care by what SAP itself. We need not worry about that. If one user has opened any object in editable mode, automatically a lock will be placed on top of that particular object. If other users are trying to access that object at the same time, they can only open it in read-only mode. They cannot do any changes parallelly. So this we do not worry and we don't have any control on this object level locking. But by using this lock objects concepts, we can go for what row level locking, record level locking. Our database table will contain what records. Okay. So by using this lock object, we can lock a particular record, perform the required operation and then release the lock so that we are ensuring the data consistency. We are avoiding the deadlock situation. Something like this. See here, assume that we have some table. Try to understand. We have some table. It can be a standard table or custom table, which has got some three fields like employee number, employee name, and employee designation. Okay, and this is the data. This is the data available in my table. So assume that we have one user by name, what SAP user. Yeah, this user, this user is accessing this record. Okay, this user is accessing this particular record. So what this user wants to do, you don't want the other users also to modify this record at any point of time, or you don't want the other users to read this record at any point, at same point of time. So what this user will do, he will place a lock on this record. What are the record I have highlighted? He will place a lock on this record. He will do the necessary changes. So parallel if some other user, parallel if some other user is trying to access that record, they cannot access this record. Okay. It depends on the permissions. Other users may access this record in read-only mode, or other users may not have access, what may not have access for read-only also. Okay. So if other users are trying to access, you may get a message saying that. This record is what log. This row is logged on behalf of which user here? SAP user. So that other user cannot access the record. Understood? So what this diagram is saying is whenever you are updating any record in the table, it is recommended to lock that record and make the necessary changes. 
when you are doing the changes if other users is trying to access the same record we should deny the access okay so this can be achieved by using what lock objects so lock objects are used for what row level locking record level locking hope it's clear to everyone any questions please ask Done. So let us see how to create the lock objects and how to use the lock objects. Okay. No particular record, particular record, not all data. Lock objects is used for locking a particular record. Lock is always performed based on primary key column. So primary key column means what? It doesn't have a duplicate value. So it is going to lock only single record single i cannot lock multiple records at a time okay so always the lock object will take primary key field as input primary key field means which doesn't have a duplicate values so only one record we can lock do the necessary changes at the same time if other users are trying to access that record it should deny the access that can be achieved by using what lock object but why we have to lock means to avoid what deadlock situation to avoid the deadlock situation we need to go for lock objects right so let's see how to implement this one second One second, please. Yeah. So let's see how to do it. So let me go to the server. So suppose assume that assume that I want to place a lock on the records of what K11 table. So if you go to our dictionary C11, let me take any can be standard table or custom table. I'm going for the standard table K11. So what are the primary key fields of this K11 table? We have two primary key fields, MA and DT and what KU and then R. Client field and what customer number. So lock object is always going to take what key fields as parameters. Key fields of the tables as what parameters. So in this case, K one has got two key fields. One is client field, another is what customer number. Client field and what customer number. So let's see how to use that. Yeah. So far we know that whenever we create the custom objects whether custom repository objects or whether custom dictionary objects we will start the custom objects with what z or what y but lock objects whenever you are creating the lock objects lock object names must always start with ez or ey lock object names must always start with ez or what ey so how do you create the lock objects here in sc11 we have a radio button lock object let me choose the radio button lock object and here I'll give the lock object name. Okay, so let me give the name as something. I'll directly start with Z. I'll give the name of the lock object as something Z lock custom Z lock Kunar. Something, some name I'm giving. I'm starting with what? Z or Y. I'll try to create. So when I try to create, that you can see here I got a warning on the status bar. It is saying that lock object name should begin with what E. It seems that lock object name should begin with what E. Compulsory, we have to follow this particular naming standard. So what I have to do? 
otherwise we're asking what access key so let me cancel this so you must start with what ez or what ey so let me give the name as ez lock customer number some name i am giving ez lock customer number done i'll click on what create and i click on create done it is asking the short description i'll give the description of lock object for customer number some description i'm giving done then we have three tabs here attribute tab table tab and lock parameter i'll go to table tab in the table tab we need to specify the what name of the table okay which uh, which uh, table data you want to lock kn1 table data so i'll give the name of the table as what kn1 name of the table is kn1 then it is asking the type of lock lock mode means nothing but type of lock okay lock mode is nothing but type of lock so we have different types of locking modes here okay so all these things are not required the first three are important okay the first three are important write lock read lock exclusive and not cumulative other things not required for us so this write lock we also call it as exclusive lock right lock we also call it as what exclusive and cumulative lock this read lock we also call it as shared lock and this is exclusive not cumulative okay so this is similar to the first lock type but there is a small change so detailed notes is already there here in the notes which i shared already in the google drive which i already shared uh, i sent a mail to download this so just go through that you will have the detailed notes about that what types of locks so i gave the detailed notes here so the first lock is what write lock or we also call it about exclusive lock so what is the concept of this write lock in this only one user can ed can read or edit the locked records okay write lock means in this only one user can read or what modify the locked record if other users request for the exclusive lock is request will be rejected but the request is stored in the queue request is stored in the queue once a first user releases the exclusive lock the exclusive lock access is given to what other user in the queue that is a concept of what exclusive lock or we call it as write lock shared lock means what in this multiple users can read the locked record okay multiple users can read the same record at any point of time okay exclusive but not cumulative means it is similar to the exclusive lock that is the first lock but other users request is not stored in the queue in case of first case what happens if other users are sending the request their request is stored in the queue so when the first user comes out of that lock the request is given to what second user because the request is stored in the queue but in the third case the requests are not stored in the queue that is the only difference okay so here we need to choose what the type of lock so i'll go for i'll go for what write lock write lock is nothing but what exclusive lock so what is the concept of write lock only one user can edit the record or read the record at, at any point of time okay if other users are trying to request or trying to access their request is stored in the queue that is the concept of what write lock okay so i repeat in the table tab i need to give the name of what i need to give the name of the table and here lock mode means the type of lock so i am going for what write lock why i am going for write lock i want only one user to read or modify a record at any point of time then that's all then go to what lock parameter if i go to lock parameter you can observe by default you'll get what key fields of the table what are the key fields of the table ma and dt and what customer number are the key fields of the table so those two fields are added automatically that's all so my lock object creation is done so what you have to specify in the lock object the name of the table and the type of lock i am going for write lock or we call it as exclusive lock and by default 
the lock parameter will be the key fields of the table. So let me save it. Check for the syntax error. Activate your table. Activate your lock object. Right, so it is activated. Understood? So the lock object is not activated. So, so whenever a lock object is created, whenever a lock object is created, SAP is going to create what two function models. Okay, whenever a lock object is created, SAP is going to create two function models. Okay, one function model is MQ underscore lock object name which is used for locking the record and another function model is what dq underscore lock object name this is for what releasing the lock on the record so automatically sap will create these two function module so this is my lock object name i have created and activated the lock object sap would have created what two function models so let me cross check those function models how to get that function models here only you can see this is my lock object. If you want to get that lock object function model name, somewhere here you can see. Yeah. If you go to this, uh, if you choose the menu go to, okay, the lock object after activating, choose the menu go to. Okay, we have lock modules. Okay, we have lock modules. When I click on that lock modules, choose the video go to and choose what lock modules so sap is going to display you the function modules which got generated on behalf of this particular lock object what is that function model see one is mq underscore lock object and this is for what requesting the lock and another function model is what dq underscore so on so this is for what releasing the lock so two function models will automatically get generated done okay so these are the two functionals which got generated now let me try to use them so let us see how to use a lock objects in your program so i'll say sc38 i'll give the name of the program as something z use lock objects Type of program is what executable program. Let me save it in the local object. Yeah. So here, uh, I'll take a very simple example. Uh, let me read customer number from the user. So I am reading the input from the user. P underscore kuna type. K eleven hyphen kuna. Then I'll take two variables. V underscore what? Name one. Type what? K eleven hyphen name one. Then I'll take V underscore what is zero one. Type K eleven hyphen what is zero. So I declare what? Two fields, two variables referring to what? Name one and what is zero one of K eleven table. Now, based on this customer number, I want to get the data. Customer number is a primary key field in the table. Now, so you'll get only single record. So since anyway, I want to get single record. So select single. What are the fields? Name one, ORT01. From which table? From K1 into, into. What are my variables? I'll say V underscore name one, comma. V underscore ORT01. Where? Customer number equal to the given customer number. What is that? P underscore customer number. I'll check for size sub RC. If the select is successfully executed, size sub RC will be zero. If size sub RC equal to zero, I'll just say customer found. Customer found. I'll try to display the data. So here I'll say 
customer name is v underscore name one and in the next line let me say customer city let's say v underscore rt zero else i'll give a message customer not found customer not found end of all if you got end of that let me save check for the syntax check for the syntax no errors activate so what i'm trying to to do this here is i'm trying to access a particular record i'm going to read customer number from the user based on that entered customer number i'm trying to retrieve that particular record from what knm one table so let me execute this i'll say fit i'll give some customer number thousand okay execute this i'll say fit yeah customer is found i got the data becker berlin and customer city dot berlin done working fine see the concept here i'm executing this i'll give the customer number thousand i'll say freight yes customer is found i got the data still i am accessing the record still i am accessing the record and i have not it came out of the program i have not it came out of the program so i'll keep this as it is i'll keep this as it is now i'll open another session okay so on the application toolbar uh, not uh, on the standard toolbar we have a button what create new session i'll try to open another session okay so assume that this is a session related to other user okay it is the same user in this case but assume that this is a session related to other user so the other user will also run the same program okay and so i'll say fit and already already the first user let me close this. Already, the first user is accessing that record. What is that record? Customer number is thousand. Still, is accessing. Now, at the same time, other user. Assume that this is other user. I'll give thousand here. I'll say fetch. Are we able to access? Yes. So you have two users are able to access what same record. Are able to access what same record. So. If this is the case, it might lead to a deadlock situation because assume that first user is trying to modify that record. In this case, I'm only reading, but assume that the first user is trying to modify that record. At the same time, if other user will access, the other user will get what? Invalid data. Na? Other user will get the invalid data. It will lead to a deadlock situation. So what I said here, So what I said here, we need to lock that particular record. Okay, whichever record you are trying to access, you need to lock that record and then perform the required operation and then release the lock. If other user is trying to access that record at the same time, the access should be denied. In this case, in this case, what you have to understand, both users are able to access what? The same record. Make clear both are able to access the same record. Once again, see, I'll say fit. I'll be thousand one. I don't know if this customer is there or not. I'll say fit. Yes, the customer is there. Is able to access that record. Now at the same time, I assume that this is the other user. Now you will also give thousand one. When I say fit, he is also able to access the record. But I don't want to allow this. I want to lock the record so that other users. Other user cannot access that same record at the same time. So let's see how to do it. Oh, the requirement is clear. Okay. So see what I'll do for this. So here I'm reading the customer. So first step, what I'll do is, yeah, yeah. I'll use one statement. Already we have seen this. Once again, I'll use this set PF status. Set to PS status. I'll give the status name as ABC. This status name should be given in what uppercase. If I give it in lowercase, I'm giving it in lowercase. When I try to double click on the status name, when I try to double click on the status name, I'm getting a message. Use uppercase letters for the status what ABC. So this status name should be not uppercase. Any name you can give. 
I'll get as ABC. So what is the purpose of this set PF status? It is used for defining our own GUI status. So as part of our own GUI status, okay, as part of our own GUI status, we can what? Add our own buttons and application toolbar. We can enable or disable the standard buttons. All those things we can do by using what? custom GUI status. So already we know this statement will invoke what menu painter will invoke what SC41 menu painter. By using that menu painter, we can create our own GUI status. As part of our own GUI status, we can add custom buttons on the application toolbar. We can enable or disable the standard buttons. All those things we can do by using what? set PF status okay so let me double click on the status name and double click on the status name I'm getting a message GUI status does not exist do you want to create the object yes I'll say yes yeah, it is asking some short description then it will open me what menu painter this is called another menu painter SC41 so what is my requirement now my requirement is I want to add I want to add custom buttons on my application toolbar. I want to add custom buttons on my application toolbar. So I'll go to application toolbar. Here I'll add two buttons. For every button you have to give a function code now. So I'll give the function code as something FC1. I'll press enter. Okay, let us provide the text. Continue. I'll give the text as something. What? And leave some text and in leave done i'll assign some function key for that shortcut and you have to done i'll give another function code fc2 done i'll give the text let me use the text as something uh, what unlock some text unlock answer done so why i'm creating these buttons you'll understand i'll assign the f5 now the f1 is not there because it is a reserved function key for F1 and F2 I have assigned to the previous button. F3 for back button. F4 for custom F4. That's why we don't have that F1, F3 and F4. Okay. So I'll choose F5 here. Done. So I created two buttons. What are the button function codes? FC1 and FC2. So let me save it. Check for the syntax error. Activate the GUS status. So GUI status is activated. It is associated with the two buttons. Done. Save it. Activate. It's done. Okay. So now you can see when I say F8. Yeah. When I say F8, this is my selection screen. I'll give thousand. When I say execute. Yeah. Since since I defined my own GUI status, you can observe here I don't have the back button. Already we know. Whenever we define our own GUI status, whenever we define our own GUI status, SAP will lose the functionality of what standard back button. So I need to write the logic for my own button now. What is that button? Leave button. This button is there or not? Application toolbar of which screen? What is the screen called as LPS? List of processing screen. The output screen we call it as what? LPS. List of processing screen. I repeat once again, whenever we define our own GUI status, SAP will lose the functionality of what? Some of the standard button. So I need to implement the logic for our own button. So to come back to the program now, I'll say slash n sc38. So that it will close the current session and opens a new session. Done. So, so here, whenever we click on these buttons, Okay, if the button is there on the selection screen, the event triggered is what? At selection screen. But now the button is there on what? Uh, uh, button is there on what? Application toolbar of list processing screen. So what is the event triggered when you click on the buttons of LPS? At the user command. We have an event called what? At the user command. So I'm handling an event called what? At user command. Okay, if the button is there on what? selection screen application toolbar the event triggered is what at selection screen now the button is there and what output screen application toolbar lps application toolbar 
So whenever we click on the button, the event triggered is at user command and the rest of the process is same. The function code is captured in what? Sai? You come. K Sai you come. When? What is the function code for the first button? FC1. When FC1? Okay, I'll say what? Leave program. So I'm using one standard statement, leave program, which will allow us to exit the program. Okay, end case. So I'm writing the logic only for what? One button. In which event we are writing that at user command because at user command is a event triggered whenever we click on the buttons of what LPS. This is the processing screen. So let me check it now. I'll do one thing. Okay, let me execute this. I'll give the value 1000 here. This is my selection screen. When I execute, then I got the result, and this is the output LPS screen. I'll click on the button. What is the event triggered at user command? Done working fine. Okay, so why I took this GI status, you'll understand it shortly. So, what is our agenda here? Two users by default, two users are able to access what? Same record at the same time. But what is the agenda of lock objects? We have to restrict the user, we have to restrict a record to be accessed by only one user at any point of time to avoid what? Deadlock situations. So for that, what I'll do is see here. Yeah. What I'll do is, so before I am doing the operation, first I will lock the record. I will lock the record. I will lock the record. Lock the record means which record? The customer number which you are trying to access. What is the customer number we are trying to access? P underscore Kunar is a field which holds that particular customer number. So already we know when we have created the lock object, two function models got created. NQ function model and what? DQ function model. NQ function model is used for what? Locking the record. And DQ function model is for what? Releasing the record. Releasing the lock. Okay. So let me try to go to NQ function model. So SC37, if you go to function builder, yeah, we have a function model what nq underscore nq underscore. What is my lock object name? nq underscore ez lock kuna ez lock kuna. So this is my what function model nq underscore ez lock kuna. When I display this, so I want to call this function model. What is the purpose of this function model? It is used for what? Locking a record. Okay, so before calling any function model, what we will do? We will check the signature of that function model. So if you see the import, yeah, there are many parameters. One of the parameters what? MA and DT. Nothing but what? Client field. And another field is what? Kunar. Customer number. Understood? So when you are creating the lock object, by default it has to two lock parameters. The key fields. What are the key fields of the k one table? Client field and customer number. So I'll give MA and DT and Kunar done. And uh, it returns some exceptions here. It returns some exception. So if this exception is raised, what is the meaning? Object is already locked. So what I'll do is, so first I'm going to lock the record. So I'll call the function model. So I'll go to pattern, control F6. What is the function model? NQ underscore EZ lock Kunar. NQ underscore is a lock could not done. Okay, so exporting import becomes export. Yeah, more underscore KE e, e indicates what here exclusive lock. Okay, we call this a lock exclusive or we call it as what right lock exclusive or right lock done. MA and DT nothing but system fields so on so. Kunna, what is a Kunna? I'll say P underscore what Kunna done. So I'm passing all these things done, done, done. I'll remove the rest of thing. Exceptions. I'll handle the exceptions here. I'll handle the exceptions. Done. So yeah, here I'll write the logic. So what I'll do here, I'll close it here. Done. So if you see this function model, it is going to raise this exception whenever the object is already locked. So what I'll do here, here I'll say, here I'll say if size of rc is equal to what one one i'll just give a message i'll give a message what record is locked record is locked type what e 
e means what error message end it. that's all okay so now and performing the operation perform the operation so what i'm trying to do here before i'm trying to access that record before i'm trying to retrieve that record first of all i am locking that record how do you lock that record by calling the nq function model to that nq function model what you have to pass the key field values what are the key field here client field and what customer number okay customer number if the record is already locked it is going to return me the exception what foreign lock whenever that exception is raised it is going to set the size of rc value to how much it seems one it seems that's what i'm checking that here if size of rc equal to one is what i'm giving the message record is already locked so first time it is not locked already okay second time onward it will be locked so now i'm retrieving it i'm doing it done okay now on the application toolbar i'm having a button now another button uh, unlock now so when fc2 what is the function code to what i'll do clicks on that button i want a lock i want to release a lock how do you release a lock instead of calling nq you have to call what dq dq underscore so answer okay so exporting same thing mnd kunar done so i'll just remove the rest of the part not required yeah. kunar is what p underscore kunar done that's all save it check it then activate so try to understand how to use this now let's go back yeah so this is one session this is one session this is another session assume that this another session related to other user so i am in the first user now i'll try to run the program okay try to understand i'm trying to run the program what is that i'll give thousand okay so when i try to execute what is the logic i wrote in my program first of all i am locking the record first of all i am locking the record then i am retrieving the data okay i am locking the record and then i am retrieving the data okay so see now when i execute done so what happened at the background a lock was placed on this record a lock is placed on this record still still because i have not released when you come out of the program yes the lock is automatically released but still i am in the program execution only so a lock is placed on which customer number 1000 now parallelly other user will try to access so i'll say fetch done so assume that this is another user i'll give 1000 but already 1000 record was locked now 1000 record was locked by which user the first user so when i try to access now i should get a message and let me say if it good i got a message and the state as bar what is that message record is locked who has locked it by the first user this user has still locked it suppose i am in the second session now let me execute now i'll use 1001 1001 is not locked now so this user can access this record so when i say if it Good, I got the record, but I didn't got what thousand. Okay, I'm clear because thousand is still what locked here, still locked. Now what I'll do? I'm in the first session. I'll click on the button. When I click on the button, what is the event triggered? At the user command. What is the logic I wrote in that button? I'm releasing the lock. So explicitly, I'm releasing the lock. So let me click on unlock. Done. So what is the meaning? Lock has been what released now i am in the second user done i'll give thousand now i should be able to access because the lock has been released on that uh, record so when i say effect good i got the data i got the data now this user has placed a lock this user has placed a lock on that particular record now other user cannot access that record again suppose this is another user already the second user has placed the lock so now i'll say effect i'll give thousand so I should get an error now. When I say fit, good, I got the message. Record is what? So this is a way to use the lock objects. Understood? So by default, object level locking is taken care by SAP itself. Object level locking is that when one user is trying to access any object, any program, table, structure, whatever it is, automatically 
a lock will be placed on that object means other users cannot access that object at same time so object level locking we don't have any control but when you are performing any database operations on the table data when you are trying to read update delete or whatever it is what is the recommendation it is recommended to lock that record and then do the operation so that other users cannot access that record at the same time so the advantage of this is what we can avoid the deadlock situation we can avoid the deadlock situation so to maintain the data consistency it is recommended for locking the record so for doing that we need to create what a dictionary object called as lock object and we understood that lock object name always starts with dot ez or what ey while creating the lock object we have to specify the table what is the table name i give k never and lock parameters are always what the key fields of the table which is m and dt and what could not in this case and while creating the lock object we have to specify the lock mode lock type i told basically we have three types of lock exclusive lock read lock exclusive but not cumulative exclusive lock is also called as what write lock exclusive lock is also called as what write lock so in this type of lock only one user can read or edit the record at any point of time so read lock means what any number of users can read the locked record but they cannot do any changes exclusive not cumulative means it is similar to write lock but the request is not stored in the queue if other users are trying to send the request the request will be rejected but in case of first case if other users are trying to send the request to the same record the request is stored in the queue the request is stored in the queue understood so what is the uh, procedure you have to follow before doing any database operation you lock that record by calling the nq function model perform the operation select read update delete whatever it is then release the lock then release the lock so this is a way to use the lock objects. any questions Yes. Yeah, Z table or standard table. The process is same, Srikant. We can do it on Z table as well as standard table. No issues. We can do it. Hello. 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 Yeah, Hello. Yeah. Tell. Yeah. In the NQ function model, scope parameter is there. What is the use of scope? Sorry, in NQ function model, scope parameter is there. What is the use of scope? See, there are many parameters. Okay, there are many parameters here. Okay, so you need to read the documentation. Then we need to understand that. Okay, they didn't give anything here. But see, uh, don't focus on unnecessary parameters. Am I clear? If you take any standard function, you'll have many parameters. So as a developer, we'll be using only what few parameters. So here the few parameters is what are the lock parameters I gave? What is that M A N D T and Kuna? There are other parameters like scope, weight, color. These are all internally used by what SAP itself. Okay. If you want to do more analysis on this, you need to check the documentation. Okay. So if documentation is there, we can read it. Otherwise, we can't. Let me check. I'll choose documentation here. No documentation is available. So you need to Google and understand the scope, weight, collect. Okay. So we don't have any control on this. Thing. So just ignore this. User exit in the sense.
I didn't get your uh, thing. Uh, we can wait and try, but till that time when you are waiting, the other user should release the lock. If other users are releasing the lock only, the request is given to what next user. And that also will have some time period. It will not be permanent. So that time period is again is configured internally. Lock will not be again permanent. You will have some situation when the, when the time period is exceeded, the lock will be destroyed automatically. Okay, so what is the time period? Again, it is configured internally. Okay, yes, during that time, if the first user has released the lock, yes, the access is given to what? Next user. In this case, that's what explicitly I am giving that. I am clicking on the button. So here, suppose if I execute this, I'll give 1,000. I'll give 1,000. When I execute this, I got the So the, record, the user is accessing that particular record. So a lock is placed on that. Now, if other user is also trying to run that 1,000, obviously I'll get a message. What is that? Sorry. What is that? Record is what? Log. So the user has to come out of this now. The user has to come out of this or user has to explicitly release the lock. So if he comes out of the program also, automatically the lock will be what? Released. Understood? He did not explicitly release it. Once a user comes out of the program, means the lock will be released. So now you can see when I execute this, I should be able to access that. I'm able to access. So what I'm trying to say is, you need not click on unlock button. You need not explicitly release. Once the control comes out of that, the lock is automatically destroyed. Or assume that, okay, now the record is locked on behalf of this user. And this also will have some time period. Will also will have some time period. What is the time period, where it is come, that is all that been related. Okay, we don't have any control on that. Once the time period reaches, automatically the lock will be what? Released. So it may be one hour, two hour, we don't know that. Okay, it is configured internally. But to be on safer side, if you think developer perspective, to avoid the data inconsistency, it is always recommended to lock and then perform the operation. Then perform the operation. Operation can be what? Reading the record, updating the record, whatever it is. Generally what? Read and update only. It doesn't come for insert. Insert is for inserting one new record and delete is for deleting the record. Okay. So delete also we can use, but not for inserting. Select, update, and what? Delete. Lock objects is only for records. This is a record only. I am not locking the table. I am locking a particular record here. Lock objects is only for locking a record for the table. That's what I shown here. This is the first user. Is accessing thousand. Okay, so thousand only will thousand only will be locked. The user is there. Okay, in the same table, you will try thousand one. You should be able to access. You should be able to access because the entire table data is not locked. Only that record is locked. So when I say F8 here, yes, I'm able to access. So this lock object is purely for record level locking only, not for object level locking object level locking we don't have any control it is taken care by what sap itself that's what i have shown in initially one she is it here lock objects is only for records we don't have any other purpose it is not used for locking the objects it is used for locking a record but the name is lock object here object is what record Okay, so here in this function model, many parameters. I'm not clear. So we will never use this parameter explicitly. So just ignore this. We are only concerned with what the parameters which we have to pass. Uh, sir, here we are only uh, accessing records. So we are also mandatory required to use the Vamshi, Vamshi, your voice is very low. Can you be louder, please? Uh, here we are accessing only records, no, sir. So you Correct. really 
okay so what you are saying is uh, since we are reading is it required to lock okay if you are reading it's fine but if you are trying to update okay so at that time it is recommended to what update here uh, why i went for read because why i went for read because when i am creating the lock object if you go to sc11 okay what is the lock mode i took right lock what is the concept of right lock it is both for what uh, what read or write right lock is for both for what read or write so where is that yeah you can see the lock data can be displayed or edited by what one user only one user only okay in this case since we are reading is it recommended to lock okay not required but when you are trying to update it is always recommended to what what lock and then do the operation here okay here i am displaying here i am displaying on the output screen but the requirement is suppose assume that uh, assume that this is a module pool program something like this so you just try to understand this is my module pool program where i am going to enter what customer number okay and uh, i am having this customer name and what customer city customer name and city okay so i'll have one button here i'll have one button kind of thing i assume that this is uh, get okay so here i am going to enter what customer number okay so in order to modify this record first of all you have to read now so when i click on this button when i click on this button i should send the request to the database i have to send the request to the database then i have to read those customer name and what customer city so i am reading it so i want at the time of reading also i want to what at the time of reading also i want to what log the record why because when i am trying to read when i am trying to read other users can there is the possibility that other users can modify it now so i don't want to take the chance so that's why i am going to what when i am reading also i am going to what lock it so that i'll get the existing data now in this existing data i'll do some changes this is module pool screen assume i'll do the changes next when i click on the update button this modified data should be updated so at the time of reading as well as when i am updating also i should keep it in lock mode that's the reason that's the reason it is better to what lock it in this case i am just displaying but every time it may not be displayed na no? whatever the data i retrieved i may modify after i am retrieved after i retrieved it that's the reason at the time of reading also it is recommended to lock why simple reason is when i am reading at the same time there is the possibility that other users can modify that record na no? so i don't want to take that chance that's the reason i am doing the locking from she hope it's clear now yeah what is the other doubt sir this for single user or for multiple users sir the last picture we created now single user only single user single user in the sense whichever user has first requested that thing. so always it will be single user always it is single user only one user only one user can what what uh, request for what right lock because what is the lock mode i took right lock now so only one user can display or edit if it is a shared lock if it is a shared lock okay then multiple users can read the record but cannot modify the record yes we can coming to your doubt we cannot implement it practically understood we cannot uh, implement practical events it is a operating system concept uh, we don't have any control on that multi threading okay how it is stored in the queue Uh, who is the next user in the queue? Uh, to which user the lock has been given? We cannot see that physically, so we cannot frame any scenario kind of thing. Okay, so if you think, you have to think only the development perspective. Uh, what? In that, what year it is? Our job is only to what? Just to 
lock do the operation release okay it is a multi threading concept so for explanation also uh, see i am using what here e e means what exclusive write lock so i am executing this i'll give 1000 try to understand i'll give 1000 okay okay i'm when i am executing okay a lock has been placed on this record so at the same time at the same time you are also trying to access that record what type of lock it is exclusive lock so your request is stored in the queue your request is stored in the queue so the moment i come out of this the moment i come out of this you may get the access so we cannot see it practically because since your request is stored in the queue you will get the access otherwise what happens is again you have to send a fresh request if the request is not stored in the queue you have to send what fresh request that's what the documentation is saying if you see the documentation here yeah you can see it it is similar to exclusive log but other user request is not stored in the queue but instead the other users have to send what fresh request okay but whereas here they do not send the fresh request your request is stored in the queue the moment the first user comes out of that the request is given to the next user in the queue so we cannot visualize it uh, practically this is only what a multi-threading concept kind of if you take our hr module in hr module uh, since it deals with the employee data sap itself has given those function models for locking and unlocking one second if i go to ac37 i forgot the name let me check One second, I forgot the name. In HR module, uh, since it deals with employee data, SAP itself has given this function models. Thank you. Yeah. 
do this. So see here, in HR model, you can see we have one function model, BAP underscore employee underscore NQ. Okay. So if you see this, what is the purpose here? Lock employee. This should say an HR module. SAP itself has given this process. Okay. Locking the employee and uh, releasing the lock on the employee. There is another function model. DQ is also there. Yeah. DQ. What is this? Un so in other modules, if you take SD, MM, FICO kind of thing, the developer has to take care of that. Suppose if you take our SD model, we deal with customers. Okay, so for customer, we don't have any built-in function model to do the locking and unlocking. So we have to create the lock objects. So the two function models get generated. Similarly, sales order, similarly, purchase order, material. So for all those business objects, we need to create the lock objects. So the two function models will be created. But in HR ABAP, SAP itself has given the task. One is for locking the employee, another is for what? Unlocking the employee. Okay, so here also you can see, if you see the parameter here, just observe for DQing, what it is expecting? Personal number, nothing but what? Employee number. Similarly, if you see the NQ function model, if you see the NQ function model, if you see the import section, what they are given? Personal number, nothing but what? Employee number. Okay. So don't worry about the other parameters. In our case, there are other parameters like scope, weight, correct. They are all what internal things, okay? Any NQ, DQ function model will always focus on what key fields. Key fields are the table. So if you take a customer, what is it? Customer number. If you take sales order, sales order number. Purchase order, purchase order number. Invoice, billing document number, okay? In case of HR model, employee. So other parameters are not relevant. So don't focus on that. Done? Any other questions related to lock objects? So I gave the detailed notes here. Just go through that. I gave the screenshots, everything also. Just go through this. Done. So I'll stop for today. Tomorrow we'll see other uh, dictionary objects like you have to see foreign key and uh, what check table table types, okay, currency and quantity fields, all those things. So we'll discuss that tomorrow. Then any other questions for today? So I'll wind up and continue tomorrow. Today we don't have UI5. Those attending UI5, we don't have UI5 today.